Hi there. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I'm kind of a morning person, so this is really a good time for me to share with you. And I woke up this morning wanting to tell you a story. In around 1980, I had a broken arm. By the way, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, the book series, which is we're just getting out in the third edition, and um, very exciting. I'll have more to tell you about that as these days go by. Um, but I woke up this morning wanting to tell you this story about around 1980, I fell down ice skating and I was trying to develop grace, you know, and, um, and when I fell down, I literally landed on my elbow and I broke my arm. I broke the lower part of my arm, the upper part of my arm. It looked like a Popeye arm. It was black and blue and had, you know, the muscles were like hanging out of place and all of that kind of thing. And, um, but I had heard about an, a great teacher named Dr. John Ray, who's no longer on the planet, but he was teaching something called body electronics. And I said to my friends, I went to the hospital, they x-rayed me, wanted to do surgery and put two pins in my arm. And at that time, it was a little easier to get out of the hospital. And um, so I ended up signing these release forms to get out. And I told my friends, hey, I want you guys to help me heal my arm with body electronics. And um, so the next day I laid on a massage table and my friends held points on me in these prescribed places. Also, we began drinking by the quart, these potentized minerals, which helped give our body electrical potential. And we literally drank quarts and gallons, all of us, so that there would be an electrical charge flowing between us. So, um, they literally held points on me and one friend actually held points on the back of my head somewhere on my feet and somewhere on the arm and actually as the as far away from the heart but as close to the break as possible and this was prescribed to us by someone who is already an instructor in these teachings and literally what i had to do is release my own inner pain as it came up and be aware of it allow it to be present be with it and let it flow up into the conscious mental level and then gradually allow it to be exposed to love so i did this for a couple of hours there was just breathing and my friend's fingers on the back of my head would just burn it burn and get little electric shocks in them and he would say oh whatever you're doing keep doing that and so i would keep doing this process of releasing you know pain from my whatever had happened in my life and we don't need to bring up those details right now but all those things are stored in us at a cellular level and so when we hurt ourselves or we get sick or we get injured we're actually bringing up old data we're going to call it old data we're just like a biocomputer and we're going to bring up old data in ourselves that literally is driving the boat it's cre it's causing creation and we are literally our life is like the tip of an iceberg that which is visible is above the water but there's all these other things under the water that are not maybe not as good a data to be running our lives like oh my dad yelled at me when i was a kid or you know all of these kind of things and probably a lot worse for some people and less worse for others so um so as all of this is happening, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm letting these thoughts rise to the surface. My friends are holding points on me. Everybody's quiet. And they're pretty courageous because they're holding points for hours, literally hours. So after about three hours, all of a sudden, this searing, burning heat went through my arm, which I would call similar to a kundalini fire going through. And as that sear, searing, burning heat went through my arm, the bones literally healed. They went from being broken to being whole. The muscles went from being black and blue to moving back up into place. And at, and at one point, we actually did a couple more hours and you could literally hear these little bone chips clicking back into place. And suddenly, I no longer had a broken arm. This arm has served me well ever since. Never have had any problems with it. So I had the experience of the broken arm, but because I was willing to heal and clear the darkness I carried in myself that caused that break in the first place, we were able to literally restore that tissue in the body. So this is a pretty amazing experience and I've gotten to live my life. I've also firewalked with Tony Robbins many times and helped run events where we were firewalking. I also 
um, swam with wild dolphins who, where I literally could see light that was not visible to the naked eye and could hear celestial music, whatever that meant. And it had dolphins bring me sand dollars on their tails. So I've had to, I've been able to have these really profound, amazing kind of transcendental experiences that have taught me though the value of this emotional tone scale, which I'm gonna share with you right now, because I woke up thinking, I really wanna share this with everyone um, because I've lived my life carrying this process inside of me. And when we talk about in the 21st century superhuman books, this actually, this part is in book two, which is coming out in about another month as soon as we get the audio recordings done. But um, this, this material I've carried around inside of me and lived by it my whole life. So when we say that love is at the top of the scale and breathing and smiling literally opens neural plexuses in the front of our brain and the back of our brain. And that is told us in the ancient Aramaic language, which was used by both Yeshua or Jesus and the great Buddha. So there is so much knowledge here that really can change us and how we're perceiving all these things. So let me go over some of this really quickly. I'm going to stand up here and I drew kind of a little chart of this emotional tone scale that I want you to, I want you to be able to see. Hopefully you can zoom in a little bit and take a look at it. Um, but at the top, we have breathing, smiling, and loving, where we live in joy. This is also called unconditional love. This is the peak of the human experience, and it is where, if we're in our walk of mastery, it's what we want to, to live in every day, what we want to choose to live in. And breathing and smiling is what helps us access that state. That's what the ancient Aramaic teaches us. We're literally like this just amazing biocomputer. And so here we have an emotional tone scale inside this pyramid. At the bottom is what we will call the first chakra. And so these also align with the chakras, these different levels. So at the bottom level, at our base chakra, which is connected with the glandular system, the gonads, um, is when we go suppressed is unconsciousness. And when we begin to wake up, this is where awakening happens and we begin being more aware in our world. And then at the second, second chakra level is when we are shut down is apathy. That's where we carry around all these old um, kind of asleep thoughts. And apathy turns into action when we begin to wake up. At the third chakra level is grief, but that's also our power center. And these come from the Vedic teachings, the chakras. So the ancient Vedic teachings of India. So this is kind of a combination of things that we blend together to understand how we clear ourselves to love. So at, the, at this level of our, of our power center is where we carry grief. But when we begin breathing and clearing that, we begin having self-empowerment and we can come from the strength within ourselves. At the level of the heart is where we carry fear. And when we've been shut down and we've shut ourselves down in our lives, fear is what's running the show where love should run the show. And then level five, chakra level five is at the level of the throat and it is turquoise usually. I didn't have a turquoise pen um, marker here, but that's the fifth chakra, and that's where we carry our anger. And when we first start waking up, we'll express anger through our voice. And this is both overt anger and covert anger, so hidden and external anger. But when we go past that anger, this is where our real voice is. And then above the throat is, at, at the level of the forehead or our third eye, is where our intuition is. It's where our intelligence is. And this is where when we suppress ourselves from love, we go into pain at this level. So when we're in pain in the body, it's been suppressed to this, love has been suppressed to this level. So when we're at the peak of the human experiences, which is chakra seven and above, because we actually have spiritual chakras above this, but love unconditional love, joy, enthusiasm. These are the things at the peak of our being. And when these are driving the boat, 
we become really positive co-creators in this world. So where do dark agendas come from? We're living right now with all these dark agendas and even those, so we have the regular news, which is run by 147 cor corporations. So in these dark agendas or shadows of the human experience, shadows. So we all have shadows. We have shadows inside of us. We have shadows in the human experience. And it is time for us to begin. We have this light that's coming into the planet in these times of great change, in this shift of the ages, even reported by NASA. Greater, and this is what's in my books, uh, greater gamma ray bursts, x-ray, x-rays coming in. So greater solar flares. And this is literally changing us. It's pushing us into an evolutionary leap. It's pushing us to release these shadows. And so things like sickness, even um, CB19, um, but other illnesses, having cancer, having pain in our bodies, suffering, um, all of these things um, are in the shadow side where we have suppressed ourselves out of love and we're carrying pain around inside of us. Things, and then we're looking at all this alternative news that's revealing all these things to us. And we don't want to spend a lot of time, as um, Abraham says, in our vortex, dwelling on these things that are in the shadow, vaccinations, um, microchipping, 5G, social distancing, um, the news media narratives, which are put out by, uh, by uh, six corporations, basically carry all the same news media. And this is a program in the system to help manage humanity as in to go one direction. However, when we begin waking up, um, so, so when we begin waking up, we begin clearing these things and we begin um, looking at other news media. And so we're looking at all the alternative news media and we're seeing all these things that are going on that we used to be unconscious of that are going on under the surface, running this dark shadow show on planet earth. Um, and along with all these things, our lack of education, human slavery, which includes human trafficking, which includes the adrenochrome stories, poverty, hunger, wars, killing. I mean, these are so much the shadow side of us. And when we were designed, we were designed to operate in love. Love is the power that changes, the, changes us. It's the power that changes the world around us. It's the power that really runs the universe. All of the dark agendas are kind of an experience in the shadow world. So as we begin clearing these things, how do we clear these things? Well, first of all, we take care of our bodies. Natural foods, natural movement, getting out in the daylight, the fresh air, breathing, entering into our own life and not just consuming that which is produced commercially. Um, maybe growing some food in our yard, but literally starting to take care of this body because it is a biocomputer. It is a mechanism that we want to be out of pain. We want to be operating in love. And then the biggest thing is we clear our old data. Everything under this wavy line at the top is all where our old data is stored. Pain, anger, fear, grief, apathy, unconsciousness, all of these are old data. They're in the part of the iceberg that's underwater. So in my books, I have some teachings about literally how to clear these things, but just taking it simply when something comes up that is pain, that is anger, that is fear, that is grief, that is apathy, or even our unconscious, we can just breathe into it. Breathe and smile and love it and say, I acknowledge you that you've been part of my journey. I acknowledge you that you have helped me learn and grow and become who I am. And now I breathe into you and I release you up to love. So this is how we clear ourselves and we change ourselves up to love. I have lived so many years with this um, emotional tone scale, with this path in my life um, for how to how to do this clearing on a moment to moment basis. And it's so important. Hopefully you could, you guys could see that. I think it's pretty clear. Um, you can zoom in on it. I'm going to read just because love is so powerful. And just as a morning reading, I'm going to read this. And this is 
supposedly the letter from Albert Einstein to his daughter. Now, I, I think the guess is, and probably the public knowledge is, maybe it wasn't written by him, maybe it was written by somebody else who attributed it to him. However, I think he could have said this, and because he, his greatest sorrow was that he had created a weapon, helped create a weapon of war. And um, so let's just read this really quickly, and let's just notice that in our daily lives, we are breathing, we are smiling, we are entering into love. And even if we're focusing on all this new news media coming up, the, the alternative news even about what is going on, what's been going on in the world, and oh my gosh, are we living in the midst of this? But focusing on it is only going to hold it more in creation. What we need to focus on is loving our neighbors, loving our friends, caring about each other, caring about those who are present with us, and loving ourselves. <clears throat> so this is this supposed letter by Albert Einstein, but it's really beautiful, and it's a good reminder about how important love is in our world. There is an extremely powerful force that so far science has not found a formal explanation to. It is a force that includes and governs all others and is even behind any phenomenon operating in the universe and has not yet been identified by us. This universal force is love. When scientists looked for a unified theory of the universe, they forgot the most powerful unseen force. Love is light that enlightens those who give and receive it. Love is gravity because it makes some people feel attracted to others. Love is power because it multiplies the best that we have and allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. Love unfolds and reveals. For love we live and die. Love is God and God is love. This force explains everything and gives meaning to life. This is the variable that we have ignored for too long, maybe because we are afraid of love, because it is the only energy in the universe that man has not learned to drive at will. To give visibility to love, I made a simple substitution in my most famous equation. Instead of E equals MC squared, we accept that the energy to heal the world can be obtained through love multiplied by the speed of light squared. We arrive at the conclusion that love is the most powerful force there is because it has no limits. After the failure of humanity in the use and control of the other forces of the universe that have turned against us, it is urgent that we nourish ourselves with another kind of energy. If we want our species to survive, if we are to find the meaning of life, if we want to save the world and every sentient being that inhabits it, love is the one and only answer. Perhaps we are not yet ready to make a bomb of love, a device powerful enough to entirely destroy the hate selfishness, and greed that devastate the planet. However, each individual carries within them a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. When we learn to give and receive this universal energy, we will have affirmed that love conquers all, is able to transcend everything and anything because love is the quintessence of life. I deeply regret not having been able to express what is in my heart, which has quietly beaten for you all my life. Maybe it's too late to apologize, but as time is relative, <laughs> sorry, I need to tell you that I love you. And thanks, I have reached the ultimate answer. <laughs> sorry, sorry for my choking up, but we are here designed to operate in love. And as these alternative news media stories come up, one of the most important things that we can do is bless them, love them, say, I love you, the darkness. I'm willing to acknowledge your presence. I'm willing to feel my, my unconsciousness, my apathy, my grief, my fear, my anger, my pain. I'm willing to feel those things about it and let those rise to the surface, just like I did with my broken arm. Let all of those those shadow feelings about this darkness because they come from inside of us rise up to the surface and be transmuted with love this is how we change ourselves to change the world so i remind you today breathe smile and love and we'll see you soon here in our living breathing wonderful beautiful world okay blessings all <laughs>